When I spent the day at Birds and Bees Organic Winery and Meadery, one of my favorite parts was a tour of the orchard. Check it out. So these are some of the first uh, apple trees that mom and dad were planting as um, when they became cooperators with the U of S and even a little bit before that. And this orchard here is actually planted in uh, apples that are earliest maturing to latest in the year. So apple trees need to be cross pollinated. And you also need, like a lot of people say, oh, I'm gonna get an early maturing tree and a later maturing tree. Um, so then I'll have apples for a longer time in the season. But if those blossoms don't come out at the same time, they can't cross pollinate. <laughs> so you need two, say early season apples and you need two, say later season apples. You also need different varieties. So they can't be the same variety. Um, in town, sometimes you can have that single tree in your backyard, but in the city or in town, there's often somebody else that has an apple tree and it will get pollinated that way. For the biggest apple, you want like a, a fist width between two apples. So if you're ever pruning the blossoms off your tree, um, you would want to have like a, a fist width be between them. We don't do that because for our apples, we're not worried about the size, we're just going for volume. Because if this tree is gonna produce, let's say 100 pounds of apples, it's gonna produce 100 pounds, whether they're this big and there'll be lots of them, or if they're bigger, then there'll be fewer of them. And for us, for the juice, for the wine, it doesn't matter, we just get that, that production. Apples will also go in a cycle, they'll produce for several years and then it's almost like they don't produce sometimes, that's normal too, it's kind of a seven year cycle. This is all new growth, beautiful new growth this year with the weather. Like, so this is all new growth this year. We're really happy to see that. A couple of years ago, we had a couple of really, really dry summers and our trees had a lot of winter kill and uh, that, that heat and dryness in the summer, like in 08 and 09, really kind of stopped their growth for a while. So we're really happy to see that this year. So these are our wild black cherries. This is what we make the cherry wine from. They were built on, on the base of a choke cherry, but Dr. Lee Robertson was developing them to have more juice and more flesh, because a, a wild choke cherry is kind of a pit and then the skin and a lot of tannin. So these will be a, a little bit bigger. Like our Saskatoons, we have the four varieties, like the Thiessen, the Smoky, the North Line. There's also a Lee in the Saskatoons. We plant them in different areas because if this area was to get hit by hail or bugs or something, then our other Saskatoons are still fine. We do that with our raspberries, with all of our fruit. It means a lot more walking and a lot more space between, but that's more, and people often will say, how do you grow your Saskatoons that you don't get rust? Because a lot of people have rust in their Saskatoons and it's like, well, just plant them like you find them in mother nature. <laughs> you know, they're not row after row and really dense. so. We have some Saskatoons here, we have some over there, we have like some that are a half mile away, we have some on our other property. We use our fence lines between uh, fields that have our, our land on both sides, so they're organic. Um, yeah, it makes more work for us, but it also helps kind of level out our risk, our possible risk. So this tree has a very funny shape. It was a very beautiful tree. It's the oldest one that kind of mom and dad planted here around the yard it was planted in, I think it was 1969. And um, it was had a, you know, really nice, it looked like the perfect apple tree. But a couple of years ago, when we had a really bad storm, this spruce tree came down and it hit this tree. It took out like two thirds of the, the lilac tree. And just lucky for us, it didn't even touch the, the railing or the house. So somebody was guiding it down to make it just land so perfectly. Unfortunately, it meant this tree got hit. And um, last year, we had left a lot of the suckers, well, the last two years, we left a lot of the suckers growing. This tree, I think, went into shock because it lost pretty much all of its canopy. So we let the suckers grow so that it could at least have some um, nutrients, some green. And then this year, we've trimmed the suckers and these were uh, coming from the, the root. And most apple trees are grafted onto something else because you need a really hardy root to withstand our weather. So this we grafted last year, and this is the, tr this is the new tree that's growing. 
So as this matures, we might end up taking down that big uh, trunk. This tree had two different types of apples on it. And you can even kind of see the, the leaves on this one are smaller than this other variety. One was a rescue and the other was a higher number 12. And we have another tree and later in the fall, you can see, you can really see the difference because part of the apples are green and the other part of the tree is, is a pink color. So you can graft uh, different varieties onto the same tree. Some of our trees are painted white and that's on the bark. Um, that's for the winter time. Uh, when like in February when the sun is really low and there's still lots of snow and you and it's warm during the day it feels warm that sun reflects off the snow it hits the bark and it's so warm it actually sometimes makes the tree think it should start sending its sap and then the nights still get really cold and then it freezes <laughs> and that's one of the things that causes winter kill so by painting their their bark white uh, then it reflects the the light and you try to prevent that it's, and you have to do that sometimes when you don't have any other trees around or protecting. So when these trees were smaller and, you know, it's wide open here, you get lots of south facing sun in like November, in, sorry, in February. And that's why some of these were, were painted. In our big orchard, we don't have them painted because there's enough trees and we have some big spruce trees and such that uh, it kind of protects them from that. After the orchard that mom and dad started where we saw all the chickens, this is where they started planting. We have five acres of apples here. <laughs> and a lot of times people are really surprised to see an apple orchard in Alberta and this far north. We also have about 39 varieties of apples. Not all of them, we still have some that are numbers, like they haven't released them because some of them don't meet the criteria that they look for before they release it for public use. A good example, this first row of, like this row of trees that's next to me and the next row are the same variety. One's on a regular rootstock, a Malus baccata. The other one is on a dwarf rootstock. And you can kind of see the difference. On the, the regular rootstock, the growth pattern is literally described as leggy teenager. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a really, really lovely apple, but it's not a pretty tree and not what somebody's gonna want in their backyard. So um, like that's one that they are mostly doing just on the dwarf root stock. So that's an example. And, and the other things that when we're cooperators, we talk about how hardy the tree is over the winter time, what the blossoms do in the summer, if they blow off really easy or in the rain uh, for picking, do they blow off in any little breeze or do they stick so hard that you can't uh, pull them off without damaging the, the bark. In this orchard, we also have more of those cherries, the wild black cherries. We have the high bush cranberry, which we make our, our kinky cranberry wine from. A little further up, we have more of the hascap. If you're planting the hascap, it's a really pretty bush. Like it gets about this big and it's nice and round, but it does not compete well with any kind of quack grass or weeds. So if you're ever planning on planting it, just make sure you have it someplace where it's gonna be well tended to. So they, it needs a little bit of attention until it gets a little bit bigger. Uh, the, the apples in here will ripen anywhere from uh, probably with this heat and with how they're starting to turn pink. We're probably gonna be picking some of these by the third week of August and then into September. Some of them uh, we leave until the first frost hits them. They get really sweet after they've, they've had the frost on them. Some apples will last uh, really long, like we have some varieties that will last six months, like in a cold storage. So we have apples, crisp apples for the winter. Others will only last, you know, maybe four weeks and those we turn into juice and into wine right away. When HR returns, we'll find out how the wine is made and get to join in on stomping the berries.